If you want to learn the 10 tips on how to ace your initial call center job interview, continue watching from here up to the very end of this video. So my number one tip is to show that you understand the job description of a call center agent. Hey Maria, thank you for coming in. Uh, before we move forward, I'd like to gauge your understanding of the industry. Can you describe what you believe are the responsibilities of a call center agent? To me, a call center agent is the voice of a company or a brand. So depending on the needs of a brand, some of them could be taking calls to answer questions or troubleshoot issues or even sell products and services. That means it's very important for them to be attentive, to be calm and tech savvy enough to be able to navigate the tools and software needed to help the customers. Mm -hmm. Their goal is to give the customers the most positive feeling about the brand and services by helping them solve their problems. Mm -hmm. Having a basic understanding of the responsibilities just shows that you've done your research and you truly want to be in the industry. Number two, ensure that your resume is accurate and up to date. Hey Megan, thanks for coming in today. Uh, I was just reviewing your resume and I noticed a few gaps in your employment history. I just wanna clarify some of them. Between the time that you left off sourcing in 2019 and when you landed a job in Consendo in 2021, what were you doing? So after my time in off sourcing in 2019, I took a course, a computer basics course for about six months. And then I tried finding a job, but then pandemic hit. And so it, it, it became challenging for me to find a job. What I did was to take, a, take up a sideline gig as a delivery writer until, until 2021 when I was able to get a job in Convergys. Mm -hmm. All right. What about the break between 2015 to 2017? Okay, so during that time, I decided to go back to the province and just help with a family business. We had and still have a small convenience store. Mm -hmm. And then I felt the urge to go back to the city, to Davao City. And I started working with 611 in 2017. I think that was May 2017. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Perfect. I once applied in JP Morgan Cebu and I was not accepted because of this. Well, I, at least I was, I'm pretty sure it was because of that. Prior to his confusion about my employment history, me and the interviewer were vibing well until that part where he had to write over my resume to clarify some details. I just didn't think that I was that important at that time and I didn't make a point to remember my employment history. And so when he was asking me, certain gaps in the resume i just couldn't answer not because i was lying but because i truly could not remember number three prepare a reason for wanting to work in a call center because interviewers are always going to ask that question because if you truly want to work in the industry then surely you must have a good reason to do so other than i'm just curious so whatever answer you come up with make sure that you admire the industry and just highlight the benefit it gives to the people who work there Hey, Lisa, thanks for joining me today. So out of curiosity, um, why did you choose to pursue a job in a call center? Well, for me, it wasn't really an overnight decision. It was. It started, I think, when I saw how it transformed my cousin. My, my cousin, by the way, worked in a call center for a couple of years. And I just saw how call center transformed her in terms of communication skills and confidence and being able to handle herself in difficult situations with patience and poise. And every time I admire her, she would always credit it to the call center industry. And I think I wanna be a part of a job environment that instills those, those qualities for me. Okay. Plus, I also heard that having a call center experience can be beneficial to whatever field you wanna be in. Mm -hmm. I quite agree. Uh, call center trainings can be transformative in many ways it's it's nice to know you're quite enthusiastic about this number four research the company memorize facts about their awards and achievements if any and explain why you think the company is an ideal workplace to work in so candace why did you choose to apply here 
Prior to applying here, I did my research and I compiled a list of companies who have been receiving awards front, left, and center. And it turns out that you are one of the top companies who have been grabbing awards in the last few years. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you've got the Customer Service Excellence Award just this year. Well, I've also read reviews about your company online and a vast majority of them have been positive. So for me, if that is not a reason to apply, I don't know what is. Wow, you've actually done your research. Uh, that's definitely right. We did receive a, a, an award last May for customer service excellence. And thank you so much for wanting to be a part of that. Absolutely, I have been planning to apply even before I graduated. Number five, prepare for the most common job interview questions. This goes without saying, these are the questions that I am 99% sure are going to be asked in any job interview. I have videos on how to answer all these. I'm gonna link them in the description. Personally, I am prone to mental blocks. I'm an introvert, so talking to strangers doesn't really come naturally to me. I tend to be really self-conscious. So what I would do was collect all the common interview questions and then prepare my answer in advance and I would memorize them word for word. I know that doesn't sound glamorous, but that's what I did and that's what helped me deal with mental blocks. To my point of view, if I can prepare for these common job interview questions, then that gives me more brain power to focus on the questions that are out of the blue. <laughs> if I can control this part of the interview, then I will. These memorized answers, could actually also be applied to other questions that you do not expect in an interview. It could provide a template, but it could be different for you. Just experiment, see what works for you. And if you wanna go down this route, then I suggest that you prepare at least a week prior to your interview, because that would give you enough time to memorize your answers. So if you wanna see the most common call center job interview questions, I'm gonna link it up here. Number six, say yes to night shifts, holidays and shifting schedules. First and foremost, would you be open to working on shifting schedules? Yes, I can adapt to shifting schedules. What about graveyard shifts? Yes, I'm willing to work on graveyard shifts. Mm -hmm. And lastly, our services are quite essential, so we still work during holidays and weekends. How do you, would you feel about working on holidays like Christmas and New Year? Yes, I'm prepared for that too. While spending time with family during holidays is valuable to me, I understand as well that this is the nature of the job and I am prepared definitely to work on holidays if needed. There might be exceptions. There might be companies that are willing to adjust, especially if you're a working student, but most of the time, call centers prefer that you have a flexible schedule to adjust to theirs. Number seven, do not reveal that you're planning to leave the call center industry so soon. When companies hire and train you, that means they're investing money. And when you quit, they cannot get that money back. That's the reason why they prefer that you stay longer for at least two to three years to get their money's worth. If you're young, high school graduate or an undergraduate, they're definitely going to ask this question. You can say yes, you're planning to leave the industry, but make it a point to specify at least two to three years that you're gonna stay as a call center agent. It just makes for a realistic answer, an answer that they also wanna hear. If you are a degree holder, they might ask you if you wanna pursue a career in your chosen field, in the field that you studied for. And for that, you just say that you're planning to build a career in this industry and come up with a reason why. And I noticed that you recently finished school. Do you have any plans of going back anytime soon for further studies? Maybe get a PhD? No, not anymore. I mean, I've already graduated and I know that there is still a lot to dive into in this industry and I'm pretty sad on making a career out of this. For me, it feels like the right place for me. Number eight, whatever the question is, Demonstrate in your answer any of the following as much as you can. Active listening, empathy, patience, clear communication, negotiation skills, problem-solving skills, 
multitasking abilities, basically all traits essential to a call center agent. There are probably thousands of call center job interview questions, but essentially all of them are designed to determine whether or not you have some of these traits. In the call center world, problem solving is quite a crucial skill. Can you walk me through how you approach problem solving in a general sense? All right, uh, so first off, I really take a moment to understand what's happening. No jumping to conclusions, that's very important. And then I think about why it happened and what I can do to set it right. And then I usually come up with a list of solutions in my head and I would compare them and just pick the one that feels the most practical and right. Mm -hmm. And would you say that your method of problem solving helped you in previous situations or jobs you've held? Yes, absolutely. So in my previous roles, taking a moment to really grasp the situation uh, helps you be more objective about, about the, the, the problem instead of being emotional. Number nine, prepare for situational, behavioral, and out-of-the-box questions. This is just an initial interview, so chances are you're not going to be asked these questions much, but it's still possible. I have a video about behavioral call center job interview questions, and it's up here. I am yet to create videos about situational, which is quite similar to behavioral questions, and I'm also planning to create a video about out-of-the-box questions. To answer situational and behavioral questions, use the STAR framework. Situation, task, action, and result. And can you recall a situation in the past where your interaction skills made a real difference? Well, um, back at my old job at the cafe, I had this regular customer, let's just call her Mrs. Serrano. Uh, one day, she went to the cafe as usual, ordered her coffee, and then I noticed something was very off. I could just read from her body language that she was about to cry. She was on the verge of tears. And so when I delivered the coffee to her, I asked her if she was okay, what's wrong. It turned out that she was dealing with some personal stuff. And to be quite honest, at that time, I did not know what to do or even reply. I was not sure whether I should give her an advice. So what I did was to just listen, just let her talk and spell out her frustration. I eventually assured her that things, no matter how bad, will eventually end. That interaction probably took like five minutes before I went back to the kitchen. But the very next day, the very next day, she ordered her usual coffee again and she pulled me aside and thanked me profusely. I could not believe that she was thanking me like it was the, the best thing that could have happened to her. And then I realized that what I did, just lending her a listening ear, helped her a lot. And from that day, I made it a point to listen better and empathize better because I realized that it's just a universally important skill, no matter where you are. Mm, oh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, listening is crucial in customer service. And that's really great to hear because we need all our agents to be able to listen well and anticipate the needs of our customers. And my tip number 10 is to watch job interview simulation videos. I have plenty of interview simulation videos and the link in the description, but here's one that's specifically tailored for initial interviews. Good morning. Thanks for taking the time to interview with me today. I'm Rachel. Nice to meet you, Rachel. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Can I call you Candace? Mm -hmm. Sure, that's how everyone calls me. Are you nervous? I absolutely am. <laughs> yeah. Here's how your initial interview would look like if you apply all the tips that I've just discussed in this video. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. My next video will be about final interviews, account validation, um, situational questions, out of the box questions. And if you have suggestions, questions, leave them in the comment below, maybe some requests. Go ahead, let me know. All right, thank you so much for watching this very long video. <laughs> Bye.